Hello, I'm Von Meter. One of the young ladies you're about to meet plays the part of my wife on an album called The First Family. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is Naomi Brossart. My name is Naomi Brossart. My name is Naomi Brossart. Only one of these young ladies is the real Naomi Brossart. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Theodore Bickell, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Hi. Good evening, Bud. I'd like to take this uh, moment to welcome officially and very warmly, for the first time to tell the truth, Theodore Bickell. Consummate actor, singer, recording artist, and Theo, it's a joy to have you with us. Thank you very much. For a notorious liar to be on this program, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will you kindly open up your envelopes, take out your first... Uh, Affidavit card for the first time and follow along with me. I, Naomi Brossard, am a comedian, a former Copa girl, and part-time model. Until recently, I was a receptionist in a girdle showroom. Last October, in competition with 40 other actresses, I won an audition for an important part in a comedy record album. The album has become the best-selling LP of all time. I am the voice of the First Lady in the album called The First Family. Signed, Naomi Brossart. <laughs> and so, panel, we start things off this evening with these three young ladies all claiming to be the same one. Namely, Naomi Brossart, the voice of the First Lady on the First Family album. And we start this questioning with Peggy Cash. Peggy? Um, who pro uh, number one, who produced the record? Earl Dowd and Bob Booker. Uh, number two, uh, they wrote it, but who produced it? They produced it. Thank you. Uh, number three, who, uh, what, what record company is the name of the record company? The Cadence Records. Uh, number one, who's the head of Cadence Records? Archie Blyer. Thank you. Uh, Number two, did you get paid a flat fee? Are you on a percentage of the record, I hope? Unfortunately, I was hungry and I took a flat fee. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it. Oh, number three, when President Kennedy was asked about this record, what did he say? He thought it was great fun and he's ordered a hundred copies. <laughs> Thank you. Theo. A hundred copies. Right. Uh, what is the, number two, what is the payment at the COPA? A hundred dollars a week. <laughs> did you, uh, number three, did you pose for the album cover? Along with the others, of course. Yes, well, number one, where, where was the album cover taken? Uh, the back of it was superimposed, the White House was superimposed, and the rest was taken on Central Park. Right. Number one, what union do you have to belong to to make such a record? Astra. You, you're paid up, I suppose. <coughs> right. um, how stiff, number two, how stiff was the competition? There were 40 girls, I had to try out with 40 girls. Kitty. Number one, had you ever done any impersonations or in, I, imitations before? All my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number two, did you do them when you were a receptionist in the girdle showroom? Oh, sure. I used to imitate everybody there. <laughs> <laughs> they must have loved that. What's that to imitate? <laughs> <laughs> number three, when you were at the Copa, did you know somebody called Paul Shelley? No, I didn't. Uh, number one, did you? No, I didn't. Number two, who was the head of the COPA when you were there? Julie Podell. <laughs> number three, was Julie Podell the head when you were there? Yes. Uh, number one, how many... Oh. Tom. Uh, thank you. We found out who produced it and who wrote it. Uh, number three, what does Earl Dowd look like? Earl, forgive me. He's kind of chubby and he's got a beard that's redder than his own hair. <laughs> <laughs> number two, do you know where Earl lives? Well, he's always moving around, so now I've got that quite sure. <laughs> Thank you. Number one, uh, where was Vaughn Meter working when you cut the album? At phase two in the village. At phase two. Number three, uh, what are his plans regarding uh, the Blue Angel? Do you know? Number three? Well, he just finished at the Angel and we're going on tour. 
That's all we have time for. I'm sorry to say some fascinating facts might still be brought out, and maybe later. After the show, we can get together and chat, but right now, it's time for you to mark your ballots. So will you kindly do so, panel? Mark them immediately and without change, and of course, without consultation. As you vote for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will, of course, receive the customary $250 for every incorrect vote indulged in by our panelists. All ballots marked? Ooh, and eager, too. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, uh, I voted for number three. I thought there was a certain forthrightness and frankness about the answers. Uh, I must say that the ladies uh, certainly seemed to know what they were doing. Either they're all three working on that record, or uh, <laughs> they've been very well uh, studied. Peggy, your choice. Well, I voted for number two because I saw Jackie Kennedy do that White House tour, and she started talking to me, and she said, well, and uh, the voice was the same. <laughs> Theo, your choice. Well, I voted for number one because, first of all, she knew about phase two, and that's in the village, that's where I live, and secondly, she has Jack Jackie Kennedy's sibilant S's. <laughs> that's good. Kitty. So do you. <laughs> I voted for number three for the very same reasons you all gave. I thought they were marvelously well informed, and I thought I could detect a tiny bit of Mrs. Kennedy's enchanting soft voice in number three. Very well, there we have it. The die is cast, and we have now the moment of truth as we learn which one of these young ladies actually is the voice of the first lady in the album of the first family. And here to pick out his own first lady is the head of the first family, Vaughn Meter. Would you do us the honor of uh, selecting your own first lady? Yes, I uh, certainly would. Now, uh, <laughs> I would uh, like to command number three. She certainly did uh, answer the questions with vigor. <laughs> However, uh, I think that uh, uh, number two, I doubt if you were the real one. You're uh, probably a Republican. <laughs> Did you find this a uh, fascinating uh, experience? Yes, and I decided to leave the panel just the way they were originally. <laughs> Incidentally, Bud Collier was a gift from CBS. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, Vaughn and Naomi, thank you very much for gracing our show tonight. I understand you're about to embark on a, a national tour. Yes, well, we uh, have just recently started, and uh, tomorrow we'll be in Philadelphia, and then uh, the Academy of Music there will be traveling all over the country and wind up in Las Vegas about four months on the road. So. Now, how will you accomplish this uh, transformation of changing from a, a record album to a stage presentation? Well, we think... Uh, it's a new concept. Uh, the director, Mickey Ross, has uh, presented a new concept, I think, in comedy concert. I think is new and uh, as interesting as the album itself. I hope it is. Well, we certainly wish you well. I hope it's the brightest year that you've had thus far. You've earned it, believe me. And a joy to have you with us. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Now let's find out about these two other lovely young ladies. Number two, you got one of the votes. What is your real name and what do you really do? I'm Sandy Barkin and I'm a fashion coordinator. And number three, you got the lion's share of the votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Harriet Perlow and I'm a wig maker. <laughs> We thank you and hope we gave you just one half the fun of uh, being here as we had in your presence here. Checking up with the score should make you happy because you fooled them pretty much down the line. There were one, two, three incorrect at $250 each for a total of $750 from Salem Cigarettes as well as the carton of Salem's on the way out. Thank you again for being our guest. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs> Time you grow winter weary, try this gentle reminder of spring freshness. <laughs>